Welcome to Very Spatial TV, episode eight, where I talk a little bit about GIS and what's the S mean, and some Very Spatial Thoughts by Frank. Hi everybody, I want to talk a little bit about GIS today. Now I know we talk a lot about that on Very Spatial Podcast and in the TV, but I want to start dissecting a little bit GIS. Now the G as we know is geographic, I of course is information, but the S I think is a little more interesting thing. I want to delve a little bit harder into the S part of that. Most of my career uh, the S has stood for either science or systems, and people tend to use those terms almost interchangeably. I have balked many times in the past, as many GI scientists do, against the use of S as systems. Uh, I think that sometimes when we do that, we sort of forget some of the science that underpins GIS. And I think that when we refer to it as systems, that it sometimes sort of pushes off into just a tool set. In the last seven months, I've actually started a new hobby, and it's been a lot of fun for me, but it has actually made me rethink a little bit about the S in GIS. And I've started to realize that, you know what, S for systems isn't necessarily a bad thing. And let me explain to you why, if you will, by way of analogy, via my new hobby. Okay, I grant you, that might have been a little overdone. I'm just really excited about my new hobby. However, I kind of think that the guitar does present an interesting analogy for talking about the difference between GI systems and GI science. All right, now, guitarists are very, very obsessed, almost to a fault, with tone. They're very concerned about the tones that they get out of their guitar, and there's a lot of parts on a guitar that impact how your tone sounds at the end of the day. And let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, at this end of the neck, we have what's called a break angle. All right, so that's where the strings sort of bend down from the end of the neck. And, and the nut right there, you can see, is what allows that to happen. And it sort of pinches off the strings and allows the tone to stop there. So if we continued on beyond there, that would be just a little bit different uh, sounding than if we stop here at the neck with the bone. Different types of materials are used for different types of bones. Some are plastic, some are actually bone, some are forms of graphite or other such things. Things, and those things have an impact on what the tone is because it impacts the way that the string is sort of cut off. Next, we have the fretboard itself, which is made out of maple in this particular case, but could have a softer wood like a Piero Ferro or Rosewood. Uh, and don't forget the strings themselves, the thickness of the strings. They're lighter and thicker as I move from one end to the other. And each of the thickness of the strings creates a different sound depending on where you fret it on the board itself. Okay, so here we're on to the pickups, and that's arguably the most important part of tone completely. This one has three pickups. A lot of guitars have two. Uh, these are what are called single coil pickups, which means that uh, they have one set of magnets with wires wrapped around them. Uh, and then the way that we get sound is we vibrate the strings over top of a weak magnetic field created by the pickup itself. That vibration gets translated into electrical pulses, and that is then communicated out to the amplification system, whatever that may look like. Uh, you have one near the neck. You have one near the bridge. Uh, uh, this one's the neck one, and some of them, of course, have them in the middle uh, like we have here. If you look to an overhead view, uh, the one on the bridge is angled a bit to give different sounds for different strings. As you get higher strings, you get more of a twangy sound. Uh, the one on the front is a uh, covered slightly to give a more muted sound, which is important to the tonal characteristics of this particular guitar, but not necessarily for all guitars. Okay, let's talk about the system overall. A guitar is made up of a lot of parts. We've talked about it from the neck on down to the pickups. A lot of other things impact tone. Uh, the type of wood that you have for the body, uh, the thickness of the thing, uh, the uh, type of electronics that are contained inside of it. All of it contribute to make an overall system that is very important to tone. And everything sort of is an additive bit as you move down the, the line towards tone. But let's not forget arguably the most important part of tone, which is 
the person. Without the person in their hands, tone is in the hands, then you don't really get anything out of it. I can play this guitar all day and my hands aren't capable of playing like, say, Jimi Hendrix. So really, the system requires the human intervention, the human thought to make it realistic, to make it real, to make it something powerful. Okay, you may be saying to yourself, Frank, I'm not a guitarist. I don't care terribly much about guitar. What does this got to do with GIS? And that's a pretty valid question. But like I said, it's a way of analogy. And I think it highlights some important parts about GIS. At the end of the day, do we care a whole lot sometimes exactly what goes into making the decisions that we make within a GIS algorithm? We use certain types of analyses. We use certain types of, of data. Those are important. They have an important impact on the outcome. But at the same time, we have spatial questions that we really need to answer. And sometimes you have to sort of get at answering those questions. We rarely do GIS for the sake of doing GIS. I mean, sometimes you do to test your skills, but usually you have a purpose in mind. You're trying to make your community a better place. You're trying to make the world a better place. You're trying to help somebody do something or not do something. And really, Sometimes it's just thinking about the tools as just tools, tools that allow you to do those, those things, to answer those questions, is a much more valuable way to think about it. And it's important for us to spend time, yes, deciding specifics of how this tool is created, the decisions that were made in constructing that tool, how that's gonna impact the answers that we get. But at the same time, you can't get too bogged down in that. And sometimes you just need to have fun and do some GIS. So. What I want you to get out of this video, and I hope you get out of this video, is that, yeah, GIS stands for GI science, and that's important. And sometimes as scientists, we do science. But GIS also sometimes stands for systems. And sometimes we just need a system to answer some questions. And there's nothing wrong with it. They can coexist. If you have any thoughts on that, please leave it down below in the comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts about GI science versus GI systems. Uh, and uh, as always, you can find out more information about Very Spatial by heading to veryspatial.com. Please subscribe or hit the like button if you like what we're doing here and give feedback so we can make these videos better. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast at veryspatial.com. As always, these are just some Very Spatial Thoughts by Frank. Okay, you're not recording now, are you? Yeah. Okay, well. All right, so. Welcome to Vision.